Chapter 2. Functional Structures of Theorization Apart from any classification and stages of development, this section elucidates the processes of human growth from conception onward, though arguably this starts prior to actual insemination. Physiological Development Our mind lives and grows with our body. This is a fundamental aspect of the study of the psyche and neuroscience in general. In order to classify different phenotypes within psychological development, we must consider the physiological development of the human being as a whole from conception through death. Considering the current literature on the subject, the stages of identif identifiable phenomenology come in six or seven parts, depending on source. Beginning. After the two haploid gametes have come together, the development of a human offspring begins. This starts as the two cells become 4, 4 becomes 16, and 16 becomes 32, when the zygote attaches itself to the uterine wall. Exponential growth follows, where the zygote forms into an embryo with, it, with the central canal and eventual neural tube developing, from which all processes of the central and peripheral nervous system take shape. This, this occurs approximately four weeks post-conception. As a natural occurrence, Four to six weeks sees the development of the first identifiable human features, eight to 12 weeks bringing about the development of hands and feet, with 12 to 24 weeks producing the basic construct of human features, including facial structures, an independent visceral system, and readily identifiable brain and spinal cord. This progresses from general structure to full natal readiness from 20 to 36 weeks approximately at which point the child is birthed or birthed. We are uh, early stages. We are born without the ability to care for ourselves. This is in contrast to many mammals whose offspring, though vulnerable, can readily seek sustenance and attend to bodily functions, albeit under, or albeit, al my apologies again, under the watchful eyes of a generally maternal party. Human babies must be moved and drawn toward for suckling and basic nurturance. This occurring from birth through to about one year, the second year being where movement and discovery activities begin to actualize. Also during this period, from one to two years, full bodily structures are developed when the patella closes and fully forms the skull, the hip, and shoulder regions take shape and there is a pruning of neurons in the brain, all these given, giving rise to the ability to speak and receive discernible sensory information. In other words, perception and structure develop in such a way that there is noticeable change in governing and appearance. Childhood growth. Childhood progresses with a change in size and energy consumption. These developments seemingly slower than the original growth outside the womb. However, what is noticeable is perpetual or perceptual abilities enhancement, learning cognition, basic reasoning, etc., and the distinct solidification of individual facial and bodily features, as well as habituality or the formation of mannerisms. This continues until puberty, where there is again exponential growth. Puberty. From 9 to 11, years in girls menstruation begins and 11 to 13 in boys puberty takes hold and hormonal changes occur giving rise to the development of coarse body hair glandular secretions of odor in the outer dermis and sexual trait characteristics breasts and wider hips in females facial hair and muscular tones in males these producing an appearance similar to that of a mature adult while the drastic Hormonal influence lasts for only a few years. The onset of puberty marks the continued development of size, contemplative prowess, and greater physicality, these not reaching a peak until much later in life. It could be argued that physical strength and mental acumen are not fully developed until the late 20s, early 30s, but for the sake of continuity, we'll place the sensation, cessation of these types of changes in the early to mid 20s. With logic, adulthood. With logic and reason developed in a structural sense, 
The 20s are a time when the skeletal structures, structures become fully formed and the body becomes increasingly defined in the physical sense, leading to full maturation in the early to mid 30s. The human child has now become an adult with most becoming with most becoming independent of parental parties, at least in the sense of ability to perform self-care, having in some cases parented offspring of their own. Risks of the development of disorder and abnormality, abnormality increases outside of this age range when it comes to reproductive processes. Adulthood then proceeds though uh, through until menopause or andropause, as evidence suggests, where the reproductive menstruation, uh, menstruation cycles of the females cease and there is considerable decrease in testosterone for the males. Senescence. Senescence, provided the age is reached, begins in the 50s, becoming more apparent in the 60s and 70s, where there is a marked decline in physical capacities and intellectual cognitive processing. This is not to say there are not exceptions, nor that ignorance has come of age, but as far as quality and quantity of motion and mental expression, there is a differentiation between adult maturity and the later years. Morbidity. Death, whether caused as a result of expenditure or injurious incident, is the inevitable conclusion of the physical human lifespan. It is hard to predict when death will occur, though physicians are often able to give a time frame as to how an illness will progress. Old age sometimes brings about the cessation of mortality in sudden and unusual ways, but what is important for our consideration here is that morbidity is relative to each individual lifespan and can happen for a variety of reasons. The conclusions that can be drawn from all of this can be found in chapter 2.3 rather chapter 2 section 3 evolutionary and adaptive mechanisms evolution and the adaptation of function has become the accepted theory of reasoning for the development of heritable features this involves changes to meet the environment and climate whether activity or physical trait that are then passed down from generation to generation it also contains the idea the nurturing parties after the course of uh, course of or influence their offspring teaching them certain means to obtain necessity while maximizing productivity thereby optimizing functional structures of thought and action physical adaptation most recognizably evolutionary tends to survive inheritance as the more suited or able find means to procreate this does not, however, negate the heritability of learned behaviors and mechanisms, whereby a, a combination of exposure and or influence and physical conduction during reproductive activities creates the resultant coding of genetic material. Much about this actual transaction remains unknown, but there is general consensus in academia that we obtain much of our ability to adapt during periods of growth. As such, we develop a psyche that demonstrates this ability further discussed in the next section. Consequence of Temporal Development As we have evolved in a temporal environment, so too is, is, so too is our adaptation reflective of a time, environment, or climate development, an orientation creating a system of representation reflective of physical constructs and conditions. This temporal adherence is what structures the psyche with the human mind functioning in cycles of temporal expenditure and reconceptualization, therewith creating an adaptability mechanism allowing for the processing and incorporation of changes and statuses. Homeostatic equilibrium is, in part, maintained by the central nervous system, the same that produces the identity of our person and form of application of this individuality. Resultant reflexivity or reflectivity. In consideration of the physiological development of a human being, we can classify distinct periods of growth in the overall lifespan, unique variances within each major period of unified similarity, and a basic stage, state, and form system that describes and structuralizes adaptation of the mind. 
It is with this in mind that chapter 7 presents a theory as to how our mind has evolved. As the manifestation of these concepts into active ideation and usable cognates of principle and structure. Let me just rephrase that. It is with this in mind that chapter 7 presents a theory as to how our mind has evolved as a manifestation of thought constructs into active ideation and usable cognates of principle and structure.